Recently, my father had to replace one of the backup hard drives in the server system at his company, and he gave the old drive to me. It's quite an interesting drive, too. This, this is, of course, for I mean, a big uh, server system, where you kind of you, you open it like that, and you pop it into the, to the unit, and then when you push this down, this little arm grabs it and pushes the entire unit in further to make, get it seated in there properly. Now, this is called a SAS drive. SAS. It's 10,000 RPM and it's 300 gigabytes. It's a pretty nice little hard drive. It's pretty interesting too. Quite thick. It's definitely not the kind of consumer stuff you get for like laptops and home computers. Up until now, I've only really seen hard drives that have IDE and SATA drives, or PETA and SATA, Serial ATA and Parallel ATA. But I've never seen this drive connection before. This is called the SAS drive. That's what it looks like. It's quite interesting. It looks very similar to some laptop hard drive connections I've seen, because every so often you will come across an older laptop from the early 2000s that has a connection like this, but without this block right here. And usually whenever you see that though, it's on a hard drive like this, and it, it has a little connector to adapt that, so, oh well. Now I would say that there's, there's a fourth type of hard drive, hard, hard drive connector I've seen. It's an old edge connector on computers like from the early 1980s and stuff, but still, it's, it's not really common. This is just weird, I've never seen this connector before, it's quite interesting. As we can see right there are two LED like ports because you know, we have two plastic rods that run through this entire thing to the back of here. So wherever this thing plugs into, it has the connectors, it has the power connector, and it has two LEDs. Which it's just really interesting to think about that the like the power and the access LEDs, because of course it'll probably blink whenever it's being accessed, are actually in the very back of the connector, not in the front. It's kind of interesting. Now this is basically a little housing that's around this drive, so let's take it off. It's a neat little holder for it. It's about the same size as a laptop hard drive, but it's about the thickness of two modern ones. And I actually quite like how this connector just like holds that hard drive. It's just really strong looking and feeling. It'd be cool if you had a laptop where you could pop this into the side of the laptop. That'd be your hard drive holder. That'd be pretty cool. Now I say let's take this apart and see what it looks like inside. It's weird. How it connects from the main controller board to the hard drive are just these edge connector things or whatever they're called. They're so weird. There's a closer look at the connectors. It's quite interesting because I've never seen a hard drive where the top board is connected in that way. Just by, well, a, a compression connection, I guess you call it? I don't know. Because see, each one of these connectors connects to these pins right here. So those other connectors were obviously going to the main read-write head, and these connectors are seeming to go to the motor. And you can see like right there, those are the three pads that these connectors compress onto. To transfer to. I'm taking it that these motors inside these hard drives are like an AC motor. That way, get the, that way they can be efficiently monitored, like uh, told how fast to go, and they are fed like an AC signal, so they only go as fast as the AC signal oscillates, or so I think, because because like a DC motor, that just goes as fast as it could. Now let's take off the top cover.
So first off, we have the main cover of the hard drive. It's actually quite thick and durable. And it has this bead of a sticky rubbery compound around it that seals it. And here we have the internals of the hard drive. As you can see, here's the read-write arm, the magnet that turns it. I guess this would be an air purifier system inside here. Now it seems like it's like silica in there or, or something to absorb moisture. You can hear it rattling around. And here's a little interface thing. That's where we have the information and the commands going from the main board over it through this, through here, through this little ribbon cable, and into the arm. The arm seems kind of locked in place. Head crash. You don't want to do that to a good battery, but yeah, it's amazing how quickly clean surfaces will just attract dirty fingerprints. Let's see. Let's take off this platter. Hmm. A ring. <laughs> Look at that. So there we have it, the stripped down chassis of the server hard drive. I think the main issue of this might have been the motor bearing because it's kind of, I could feel some rough spots on it. I don't think that was for me because usually these motor bearings are pretty strong and they can handle even being like pried apart. But yeah, it seems like the bearings were going out on this and that makes sense because that's usually what kills hard drives. I'm going to put this one back together just so I can have it empty. We can look at all the other stuff I got out of it. I must say, it's a lot lighter. I kind of like this. Of course, it's a lot more empty, too. We got two platters. I think they're made of aluminium. It's kind of cool to get a bunch of these and do something cool with them, you know? spacer in between the two platters and the little thing that holds them down and we got the little read write head after almost like 10 months of using this camera I finally found the manual focus look at this isn't that awesome there we go there's a nice shot I'll have to look at those underneath the microscope sometime. Oh, look at that. It's almost like a, an image chip. Weird. 
So that's what it looks like inside a plug and play 300 gigabyte SAS hard drive. Pretty interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya.